Hi everybody, I am That Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be talking about hormonal contraceptives, specifically COCs, which are the combination pill, and also what we call the mini pill. So, let's get into it. So, how do they work? What do they do? They contain synthetic estrogen and progestin. These are hormones that are produced naturally by your body. So this is an artificial form of those hormones. And what do they do? They help suppress ovulation, thicken cervical mucus to black semen, and prevent implantation. So they prevent pregnancy. And they are actually 95% effective when used correctly. There's three different types, and actually there's more than that. When you go to get one of these pills from your doctor, there's going to be a lot of variety. They're going to ask you a lot of questions and help kind of narrow down the best pill for you. So the three formulas are the monophasic, biphasic, and tri. And kind of the big difference, the monos, they have fixed doses of both estrogen and progestin. The biphasic, they will give you a consistent amount of estrogen throughout your cycle. And then the last 11 days of your cycle, they're going to increase the amount of progestin. And then the triphasic have varied levels of both. Some important things you need to know. Before a provider would prescribe this, you're probably going to have to have an appointment with them. And the biggest thing they need is a baseline blood pressure. We need to know if you have high blood pressure or blood pressure issues before they would want to give this medication safely. And we'll talk a little bit more about the reason the blood pressure thing matters. And also, not always required by every physician, but most of them will also require a recent pap smear and a breast exam at that appointment. Now let's talk about some common side effects and some things we need to report. So common side effects of these medications can include breast tenderness, nausea, weight gain, breakthrough bleeding. This is good um, if you're on that triphasic formula, you are less likely to have the breakthrough bleeding. Um, weight gain and then mild headaches. The dangerous stuff, the big stuff that we want to educate our patients to report is aches. So this is the little memory tool, so A-C-H-E-S. So A is for abdominal pain. This could indicate some sort of gallbladder or liver issue. C is for chest pain or shortness of breath. That could indicate they've had a blood clot that's broken free, gone to their lungs, now they're having a PE. H is for headaches. Now these are not the same headaches as the common side effect. These ones, you know, are mild and they happen every now and again. These headaches are severe and persistent. And actually, People who are on a COC do have a higher risk, especially if they're a smoker, especially if their blood pressure is not under good control, to have a stroke. And sometimes a stroke in younger people can present as a severe headache. Eye problems, by eye problems they mean like blurry vision or loss of vision, things like that. Again, usually related to high blood pressure or maybe even a blood clot. And then the last one, severe leg pain, S, severe leg pain, DVT, right? Deep vein thrombosis. While this is one of the most commonly prescribed type of medications here in the United States, there are large populations of people that this is considered contraindicated. It's not safe for them to have this medication. The big one is smokers. So people who smoke cigarettes. Now a doctor is going to take in account how much you smoke in a day, and then your age. So the more you smoke and the older you are, that increases your risk of those aches that we just talked about. Those who have uncontrolled hypertension, anybody with a history of a blood clot, so it doesn't matter, DVT, PE, MI, CVA, it doesn't matter, any kind of blood clot, they're probably gonna say, no, you can't have this, it's not safe for you. Migraines, so somebody who suffers from migraines, those who've had breast cancer, and those who have coronary artery disease. Again, this one is related to the clots, right? Because they could throw a clot. So actually lots of people, this medication is not safe. So these are the contraindications. 
And then I also wanted to point out that it does interact with certain types of medications as well. So barbiturates can decrease the effectiveness of the medication and certain types of antibiotics. And that's going to depend. It's not like a blanket like, oh, all antibiotics decrease the effectiveness, only certain kinds. Some other benefits of this medication, there's a decreased incidence of endometriosis, uterine fibroids, ectopic pregnancies, certain types of cancers like colorectal cancer, endometrial cancer, and ovarian cancer, and also a decreased incidence of osteoporosis. Not everybody takes these contraceptives for that reason. A lot of people are on it to help moderate their bleeding. So people have irregular cycles, they have irregular bleeding, and so this medication can kind of help keep their cycles regular and make them less painful. So there's lots of other benefits to this medication instead of just being a contraceptive and preventing pregnancy. So the last thing I wanted to talk about in this video is the mini pill. Now let's talk about the progestin only pill. This is the mini pill. And it's called that simply because it does not contain the estrogen. With this one, ovulation may occur. If you remember the COC, part of what they do is suppress ovulation. So in this one, it doesn't do that. But it does do other important things. It causes that cervical mucus to be thicker. It causes endometrial tissue to atrophy. And it reduces the activity of the cilia in the fallopian tubes all of which help prevent implantation. And this is still a good medication. It's still effective, 92% effective when used correctly. And this is a great option for new moms who are breastfeeding. The COC is not a good option for breastfeeders because it can help reduce your milk. So if you don't want your milk reduced, if you want to continue to breastfeed, the doctor will probably prescribe this one for you. And it's also a great option for people who get frequent headaches or migraines. The side effects, really the big one, is just kind of irregular menses. So spotting and things like that might occur more commonly on the mini pill than on the regular pill. And then who is this contraindicated in? Kind of similar to the other one, those with a history of blood clots, DVTs, PEs, etc. Anybody who has, you know, issues with liver dysfunction, like cirrhosis and stuff like that, breast cancer, and then those who have a history of bariatric surgery. So that was my video on COCs and the mini pill. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.